No, no. Uh, yes, I'm recording, but let me see if I can give you, I don't think I'm able to give you access, but I can send this to you afterwards. Hold on one second. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Okay, go. All right, you guys are all set to begin. John, how are you, brother? I'm great, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. I really enjoy your film, and and this is this is simple why because I grew up in the nineties, and I, I I truly miss the nineties because I fell in love with with cinema because action movies, you know, all the classic that we have Arnold, Jean Claude, and we have these characters involved, like innocent characters involved in situations that we wonder how the hell these people are gonna, you know, be free of that situation, right. and, and I miss that a lot. And thank you for giving that back to me. I grew up in the 90s as well. And uh, I miss those movies too. And, and I miss those films almost like Reservoir Dogs, you know, mm -hmm. where you had a group of characters um, and, and really can have great performances and then burst of explosive violent action um, and a larger world outside that maybe even you didn't even have the budget to do, but but it, it, it informed a larger criminal kind of genre uh, world and, and type of film, even if these characters were just stuck in almost what was like a, a tense a tense chapter play. So I love those films too. And, and um, we tried to em emulate those, you know, as much. And as you possible. say something very important, that a good performance, you can have a good performance in an action film. Oh, yeah. and, 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 and we have lost that too. And I felt because you have one Dominican, Hemke Madera is Dominican, I'm Dominican. Yeah. And, you, and you have Diego. And I, I, and what I love about those characters is there's a fine line between desperation and being greedy. Mm -hmm. And also you wrote this movie and you co-wrote this movie. How did you come up with this character? How did you come up with that situation? Well, the situation came up just organically. I grew up in Southern California. Um, and so there's a lot of, you know, mucha gente en Los Ángeles hablas español. So, sí. you know, so, 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 you know, just in conversations with people out, out in here, we're doing work with some guys. Um, I thought of the idea. I, I called up the writers, uh, Rex New and um, uh, Nick Turner. And I said, hey, guys, this is an idea. Like, what if you hire these guys from the Home Depot, these workers, but like you were a psychopath? And and that was, a, you know, they would just come for the work. And then oh, who could these guys be? Well, let's say if you took one guy, it's his first job in America. And the second one is, is a guy who's been here for a long time. Well, who is he? And then we thought, OK, well, that's interesting. What if he had a history that that could help them survive the night? So. Those are the very first kind of inklings that got us going, working on the story. And then we just threw everything in and we started to sort of pull stuff out and sort of see what made sense. Um, we came up with a, a bunch of characters, the guys, Nick and Rex, they came up with a bunch of good ideas, like the character of Rob. Um, and that it would just change throughout the whole process. Like originally his characters, his name was Juan and he was a Mexican. And yeah. And changed that and made him a gringo who was flying drugs for them. He was like a pilot, you know? So then we put the old plane in the junkyard, like to sort of a relic of his past and his history. So all these characters started to kind of just come to life organically through this process of working on the film. And uh, I agree with you. I think there's some great performances in the film from Hemke Madera to Diego Tinoco as the, you know, the two leads of the film. Yeah. But Luke Hemsworth, Thomas Jane, Tyrese Gibson, Nick Cassavetes, Paul Johansson. These guys all deliver great performances, and and they're they're both some of them funny, some of them terrifying, and some of them both. There's it's like funny and scary, and and uh, menacing at the same time. So I'm really happy with the performances in the movie because it feels real. It feels like any person in a real way, and I think that's something special that you create in the movie. That it doesn't feel like a, an actual movie. It feels like this might happen to anybody. Yeah. Uh, and how would you react being in that position? Well, you know, we it's almost like we, we didn't have any money to make the movie, right? So when, <laughs> you, when you don't have money, it, it actually prevents you from doing too much action because you can't afford it. It's like, oh, we can have a car chase with these guys. Oh, no, we can't. So you, know, you immediately have to lose that. And you say, well, okay, well, well, what do we have? If we don't have money, we don't, we can't make the action. Well, we can make tension. OK, and sometimes tension can hold you to the screen between the action. So if we can really find a way to turn up the tension, then we can. Sorry, one sec. We can keep the audience hooked 
to the story and the characters between these little bursts of action. And that's what we could do. And so that's what we, we tried to do. We can, ha it's almost like a, um, a, a drum break, you know? Yeah. Your violin's going, and then, and then build them back up and and just hit them. So we tried to make it as much of a roller coaster ride as we could with the tools that we had. And, uh, and, and the reaction has been really strong. I think people, people like the film. I don't really know whether to call it. A, I call it a crime thriller. Some people call it a crime action thriller and action thriller. There's moments of action, you know, of course, but, um, it's not like, uh, you know, you compare it to what's considered an action film today, like Fast and the Furious. Or yeah, it's like Not that. You know, we had their, the budget that they have for their craft service, we had to make our own. Well, <laughs> the thing is, you mentioned the, the action sequence, but I think they're pretty great. Oh, and, cool. and, and they they well done. And and, and then something that, that without, you know, like a huge big screen behind you or, or like creating fake characters with a CGI, you did an outstanding uh, work. I don't know what the, what was that conversation that you had with your team of stunts to create something so cool. Well, we tried to do it like you said viscerally. We, you know, I fell in love with this thing called um, they're called uh, uh, dust hits and and zerk hits, which are basically you have a special effects team. And Diego Tinoco, if you look after our interview on his Instagram page, he posted a little behind the scenes clip of some of our special effects team doing the bullet hits. And what we did was. They basically look like paintball guns. Yeah. So I have three, four or five guys with paintball guns, and they're actually shooting at you know 300 feet a second. These dust, they're paintballs, but they're filled with dust. So they could they go bah, 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 and now it looks like just dust is blowing yeah. up. And then the other guy is shooting the same thing, but when his paintballs hit, it makes like sparks. Like so when Hemke Madera is behind the Corvette in the end of the movie, yes. where, 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 where and the car yeah. gets all shot up. Those are those are just they're called Zerk kits. And I love Zerk kits. They're the best thing for any filmmaker out there. They're very cheap. And if you do that and you're clever about it, because then what I do is I'll, I'll do that on the outside of the car, for example, when they're escaping the desert. And I'll just have three or four guys just lighting up this car with Zerk kits and dust hits. <laughs> a million of you know, because Luke Kemsworth's character has a fully automatic beretta. Yes, exactly. So so we really had to light up the car. Then I cut inside the car, and what I do is I got my special effects team to give me fake glass. So basically, it's just rubber. It's glass, but rubber. So then we're sitting in the car, and we're just throwing the fake glass around the car like that as they drive away. So And then I have the guys outside the car shooting the windshield with sparks and dust. And then we just throw the fake glass, and you add sound effects, and you add some quick editing through that. Boom. Action. I want to watch. I want to watch the movie again now. Yeah, all yeah, this yeah, yeah, it's cool. Why? Why you have to tell so many stories based on action? Because I, I I'm truly curious when, uh, when, when, what goes to your mind when a story comes to your mind? Like, why it has to be an action? Why this could have happened as a comedy, or or or, or a drama? Because what I, I mean, I, I'm tired of immigration drama. I think yeah. this is this is something cool. And I, I'm glad that you didn't use uh, Diego as Mexican. You know, like the the, the cliche that that is that we always watch in every movie. Yeah, so cool. like, it's like he's Ecuadorian, and 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 that I'm curious about how your minds work when when, when a story comes to your mind. Yeah, I mean, I have a look. I think the only thing that that a, a filmmaker storyteller can do is 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 express the way that they see the world, right? Because if we're all connected we're all connected, then basically the only way for, for my weird um, like perspective or, or kind of sardonic, misanthropic perspective on the world, which I find funny and both like funny and dark at the same time, it's the way that I view the world. I'm, I call myself like an optimistic nihilist. I'm, I'm <laughs> but I, nothing means anything. So like, it's like both. And so when I approach something, I have to just be true to the way that I see it. I, I like things to be sort of odd and off-putting and funny. I also like to kind of, in a playful way, play with the audience and their perceptions and, and misdirect them where they think it's going to go this way and then it goes this way. Like that to me is really fun um, to do. So the only thing I can do is express my point of view as much as I can with casting the actors, writing the script, bringing the team together, trying to express myself to them so that they understand what I'm trying to get. 
in order to do something that makes me feel like I'm not such a weirdo, like I'm kind of normal, you know, because people watch it and then they go, oh, that was great. You know, and so suddenly my pick, like my view of the world doesn't seem so weird because they liked it. It's so like I just have to do my own thing. And that stuff is the stuff that just comes to me, um, whether it's muzzle or, you know, doing the way I approach crypto or bad hombres or, or high school or any of these films, like, like they, they uh, uh, are just my sensibilities that I'm trying to put forward. And uh, um, it's just the stuff that's organically me, you know? And I, and I think also you give uh, Tyrese Gibson like his first villain in, 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 in movies. And, and, and how is working with, you work, Tyrese is a superstar with, we know for many, many action movies. Hemke is in the Queen of the South. Diego has worked in drama. Uh, Nick, he has. I, I feel Nick like he has. Nick Asabeta has this strong personality that that he goes with these characters, like these kind of characters with this character driven. And and you mentioned that you choose your casting, your, your cast, your crew. And how was that process in you know, creating your your people, your your well, villains, your your? Uh, yeah. I think the anti heroes. Yeah, because they're, they're they, all, they cannot transform. Well, the truth is, like, we're all flawed people, right? So looking at people that are extremely flawed just becomes like a magnification of us all. And we're able to kind of, I don't know, uh, see something interesting about the world, maybe. But the, the casting process was interesting because I had no casting director on this film. So I had no location scout. I was the location scout, the assistant editor, a co-editor. I was the casting director. <laughs> I was like, cooking hamburgers. I was, I was like, I mean, this this movie was, uh, was, I made like, you know, I was working on the poster, cutting the trailer together. <laughs> so I really did a lot of crazy stuff on this movie. But so so casting was really like, who do I think is going to be good? I'd worked with Luke Hemsworth before in crypto. I thought he would be yeah. great. For Donnie Boy. Boom. I've worked with Paul Johansson before. He was in crypto. He was also in muzzle. So I, I cast him as as horrible Steve Hoskins. I'd never worked with Tyrese before, but I'd never seen him play like a menacing guy like this. Exactly. It would be He's funny. He's the funny guy, the, the, the drama guy. And he's because... always smiling and being funny. And, right. And I thought, exactly. but he looks, so what happened was with Tyrese, I went to, I took my daughter, my youngest daughter to uh, uh, Universal Studios and we went on the Universal Studios tour and we were in the Fast and the Furious thing. And Tyrese is like kind of the star of that, Uh, yeah. when you go into the in the tram and he's like hey everybody da, 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 and, he, and he's talking and the audience was so engaged by him and I remember looking around and seeing everybody smiling and loving Tyrese on this in this big screen and he also looked really like kind of cool and intense and I remember thinking huh Tyrese like, that guy and I came out of the Universal Studios with my kid and I called my producing partner and I was like What about Tyrese is this role? And then that's, so that's how that idea happened. And working with him was great. And then uh, Thomas Jane, I've loved him since Boogie Nights when he was in that drug Oof. on wrong and Boogie Nights. Oh, and yeah. to me, that scene in Boogie Nights where the drug deal goes wrong with Thomas Jane is the best tone in, in almost in anything because it's tense and funny at the same time where the, the comedy of John C. Riley doesn't undermine the tension and the tension with Thomas Jane and Mark Wahlberg and, you know, the other actors doesn't undermine the comedy. So they both work in the same. And I wanted to go for that exact tone. So that drove me to try to reach out to Thomas Jane um, for that exact thing. And I gave him a mustache like he had in that movie. I wanted to, and I feel like this is the closest performance to that character in Boogie Nights. I agree. Was, so iconic and obviously but not in underwear he's yeah. an underwear in boogie nights but not yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah no, no he, is, he is he is but he also in um you know uh the punisher and all these great great performances that he's done so he uh was great and we became really close he's he's a really awesome actor he's funny he's dramatic it's the same kind of thing henke madera did a great job i've seen queen of the south and i thought he would be great to meet with And when I met with him, I realized he's so funny, but he's yeah. also going be the menacing character from Queen of the South. But he's got this like really warm soul. He's a family man. He loves his wife. He has a lot of children. He's, you know, he drove a big family, you know, car, big Cadillac over to my house. And 
and he talked to me about his children, his family. And I could just sense this, like this big heart, you know, because that character really needs to be the sort of reformed bad guy, bad hombre, yeah. the guy who's trying to redeem himself in the eyes of God, really, after doing horrible psychopathic things in his youth. You know, we've all made mistakes in our youth and things like that. And it's about trying to be responsible and what that sacrifice needs to be in order to sort of earn his way back into heaven to, to be reunited with his family. And so he kind of just gave me the sense of like gravitas, heart, and he was going to take it seriously. And so, so I think he did a great job along with the rest of the actors. Nick Cassavetes, you mentioned, came in and he's just like almost steals the movie, I think. Like yeah, he's, exactly. He's so funny. And it's, it's it's so great his arc Dude. from from being a very big cool character with tattoos and cool guy at the beginning to where he ends up yeah <laughs> so exactly he's he's totally in over his head um <laughs> you know it's just a it's just a really funny saying luke hemsworth is i think it's the best performance i've ever seen from him he's great and everything but and he's great in crypto very different but this performance is so it's so fun and and wild and um you know he he originally wasn't going to do it in his australian accent and i saw him he invited me to see a movie of his, and he's doing the australian accent in this movie called bosch and rocket that he did and i came out of the screening and i saw him and i said hey man and i said donnie's australian and he said what and i said yeah donnie's australian donnie's australian. and he went no no and i said just think about it he called me tomorrow and he called me tomorrow he said okay donnie's australian and so that was kind of a, a thing there. And I thought the performance is great. Paul Johansson, again, he almost steals the movie. Um, playing Diego. Horrible, yeah, and horrible Steve Hoskin. And Diego just does a great job of, of, of playing that central character, which is hard because mm -hmm. all the other characters have to revolve around him. And he mm -hmm. has to do a lot of looking, which is, it's hard. You know, he's peeking, he's looking at the violence, he's watching the stuff going on. He's looking at the characters. We subjectively have to experience the world through him, but he he's almost like our entry point into yeah. the movie. And he's, that's a hard thing to do, and he does a great job. sort of, And also the way that his character arcs out at the end. Because Diego character is the line between greedy and desperation. Like, what do we do with all this money? Yeah, and, and really his character is the one who who sort of has to, has to learn. Through him, we learn what, what the film says is the current state of the American dream. You know, that in order to in order to drive off into the sunset with a big bag of money, you got to be covered in blood. <laughs> yep. At this point, John, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed the movie. Like I said, um, you just make me, make, gave me a really good flashback from my youth, and I appreciate it. And I just I'm gonna recommend to everyone to watch Bad Hombres. We really appreciate it. And what I appreciate the most is that you're on the set of Bad Hombres in the vet operating room. It looks like. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I don't, I'm a physician too. So I'm in a, in a, in a you know, oh, things for doctors. It almost yes. looks like the set. It looks just like the set. It's the same color. I know. I know. <laughs> probably, probably it's also a, a fake background that I'm creating uh -huh. to, right, right, to make right. fun into your movie. <laughs> nice visual effects. Well, great talking to you, man. Great talking to you. Thank you so My much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Right, Bye-bye, John.